Welcome back to PJ Chen Design. This is PJ. Today I would like to show you how to make this simple but elegant feather ring in this Rhino 3D modeling tutorial. Are you ready? Let's get started. For the ring, we always starting with the ring shank first in this uh, situation we want to start in snapping to the zero. I want to set it the radius for eight and diameter for 16 for this demonstration. And we're going to come into the top view and then we're going to look at the top view and see where we want a feather to start and where we want it to be end. And so for my curve, I'm going to draw something look like this coming up something like this. It really depends on your design and how you like it. Uh, but I personally like to have a something look like this. The second line I'm just going to draw from the center and go something like this directly. So I'm going to have a feather go from here to here as the direction. Okay, uh, you can make this longer if you want to, and it will kind of just get crossed a little bit. I actually want it to be a little bit longer so I can trim it a beautiful curve right there later. All right, how do we gonna get some step in between? Depends on how many pieces you wanted to have in the middle. This might be a little bit too thin. I wanna get them a little bit wider so they look uh, more sturdy for the jewelry design. All right, I got two curve here and I'm going to use the command called twin curve. In between this curve, beginning at the end, and depends on how many section that you wanted to have there. Um, I would have wanted to try maybe five section and see how it look. You do not want to have each of them is like too thin. So maybe I'm going to reduce one number. Otherwise they will get a little bit too thin there. All right. So now we have something like this. This is our ring. I'm just going to lock it first in case I kind of accidentally to trim it. And then we want to trim a little bit right there. Okay. So before we do anything, I'm going to draw a curve. And this curve is starting from here, ending maybe here. And I want to come up, come up some sort of a general curve right there. And with that curve, I'm going to trim it off. Everything is extra, like past that curve there. So I can have a really nice um, outline over there. Okay, so once you get that, we can delete this one. Let's take a look on the perspective. All you see is now a bunch of the line on the construction plane. And I also have this uh, ring rail there. I'm going to unlock the ring rail. And then we are going to make those line coming up to this shape. The command that we are going to use is curve from two view. And what is curve from two view is I'm looking at the top view. I see those curve. I'm looking at the front view. I see the circle. Other than that, it's all sticky with the construct plane. So you can only see one drawing from one view and we need to create a curve from two view. All right. So let's go ahead to use curve from two view and we're going to do one by one. Click this one and click this one really quickly. You're going to get this one. Let's do for all of them. Click this one, this one. All right. So now I have those right here and I can do one more on the very Last one is kind of repeating over there. Okay, so now we have all those lines. We don't, we want to use that one to trim the bottom that we don't need it. So let's go ahead to trim all of this right there. And again, I'm going to lock my ring rail in case I accidentally do trimming or did it. All right, I also have this one again. I'm going to trim and see if I have that bottom there. Okay, now we have everything clear and we can go ahead to hide in this one because we no longer need it. Now we need to decide the thickness of this one. All right, so I simply just going to use the arc tool. You have this arc start and direction and I'm going to pick up at the end point here, end point here and make sure that I'm looking at my front view and I got this arc right there. I'm going to do it again. Ending point, I may fast forward right here to be faster. All right. So now you have this and this point, you have to watch out the thickness. And I did not intend to print this just for the demo for you. So I do not care about thickness, but if with this thickness right here, coming to here might be a little bit too thin. So you might want to watch out that. After you do that, uh, let's go ahead to draw the straight line so we can close that later easier. So I'm going to draw a bunch of uh, uh, polyline and make sure you snapping the endpoint to the endpoint 
from here to here and also from here to here. In order to make them into easier to make them into a solid, I actually like to join all of this. So let's do one by one, join this one by one like this. And then we are going to sweep to rail, rail one, rail two, cross section, go in there rail one, rail two, cross section. And again, sweep to rail, rail one, rail two, cross section. And you see that it's crazy over there. So let's go ahead to split this right at the quadrant. So now we have this little section and then we can do again, sweep to rail, rail one, rail two and cross section. All right, so now I have this, I wanted to have a tip going nicer um, coming out. And so I'm going to use the blend curve tool and we're going to blend from here on the curve to here on the curve. All right. So once you get this, there are several ways that you can make them nicely. I simply just going to split this guy in half with the point and somewhere at the middle right there. And I simply just going to use my sweep two and doing rail one, rail two, cross section and coming in like this. All right. So then they will be nicely. So I'm going to fast forward here to do the same thing. All right. So once you have everything, you can go ahead to join them together. And then this is what I mean when it's getting too thin right there. All right. So uh, to fix that, instead of having an arc, you might want to having a profile look more like this, having an arc. And you also want to have something on the bottom, something like this and delete the one in the middle. So you may want to have this shape instead of just the arc, like what I have there. All right. So now you have this, um, we are going to work on the other side, simply just using the rotate and make sure copy equal. Yes. On the top, I want to snapping into the zero and I'm going to rotate 180 degree like this. Okay. So now we have this, um, in order to create a button of the ring shank, we need to have a new profile coming up and I can see a little bit like bump right there. And that's actually not too good to have that bump. So what I like to do is just draw a straight line stamping into the zero from the center. And I want to use that to trim off everything on the bottom and make sure you select everybody. So it's kind of a, having a clean cut over there. And this is easier for us to do any of the additional things on the ring shank. As you can see, it's really thin. I keep saying that I should adjust that, but this is a demo. I'm just going to keep going to show them the video time. All right. So next thing that we wanted to do is we want to duplicate the edges of here and also the here. All right, let's hit enter. And if you take a look on those, I'm going to move them to other layer and just hide a ring. And then we can take a look on those, right? This is actually not too good. Uh, we wanted to have something a little bit nicer, uh, rounded here. Um, but since this is the profile, we just have to use the profile. Okay. So at the profile right here, I'm going to join everybody the same going to join everybody here. And we have our ring shank here. I'm going to unlock my ring shank and bring my ring shank to this layer so we can work on this without seeing the ring. All right. So really simple. Once you have everything joined together, let's go ahead to sweep one rail. And then you got this from this to this. All right. So make sure they all align, which means they all should facing the same direction and then they'll be on the same point. And then you will get something like this. If we take a look on the ghost view and we're going to see something like this. So you have a feather ring on the top, you have a really nice uh, ring on the bottom and then coming back to the other side, matching hundred percent correctly. If you like my video, join the membership. You're going to see a lot more tip and trick. Uh, for my Rhino 3D uh, design technique. Hope to see you in the membership program. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next.